Abul Qasim Fazlul Huq, the 26th of October 1873, the 27th of April 1962, was a Bengali lawyer, legislator, and statesman in the 20th century. Huck was a major political figure in British India and later in Pakistan including East Pakistan, which is now Bangladesh. He was one of the most reputed lawyers in the High Court of Calcutta and High Court of Dhaka. Born in Bakerganj, he was an alumnus of the University of Calcutta. He worked in the regional civil service and began his political career in eastern Bengal and Assam in 1906. Huck was first elected to the Bengal Legislative Council from Dhaka in 1913, and served on the council for 21 years until 1934. He was a member of the Central Legislative Assembly for two years, between 1934 and 1936. For 10 10 years between 1937 and 1947, he was an elected member of the Bengal Legislative Assembly, where he was Prime Minister and Leader of the House for six years. He was later elected to the East Bengal Legislative Assembly, where he was Chief Minister for two months, and to the Constituent Assembly of Pakistan, where he was Home Minister for one year, in the 1950s. Huck boycotted titles and knighthood granted by the British government. He is popularly known with the title of Sher e Bangla. Lion of Bengal. He was notable for his English oratory during speeches to the Bengali legislature. Huck courted the votes of the Bengali middle classes and rural communities. He pushed for land reform and curbing the influence of zamindars. Huck was considered a leftist and social democrat on the political spectrum. His ministries were marked by intense factional infighting. In 1940, Huck had one of his most notable political achievements, when he presented the Lahore Resolution. During the Second World War, Huck joined the Viceroy of India's Defence Council and supported Allied war efforts. Under pressure from the governor of Bengal during the Quit India movement and after the withdrawal of the Hindu Mahasabha from his cabinet, Huck resigned from the post of premier in March 1943. In the Dominion of Pakistan, Huck worked for five years as East Bengal's Attorney General and participated in the Bengali language movement. He was elected as Chief Minister, served as a Federal Minister and was a Provincial Governor in the 1950s. Huck became Secretary of the Bengal Provincial Muslim League in 1913. In 1929, he founded the All Bengal Tenants Association, which evolved into a political platform, including as a part of the post-partition United Front. Huck held important political offices in the subcontinent, including President of the All India Muslim League 1916 General Secretary of the Indian National Congress 1916 Education Minister of Bengal 1924, Mayor of Calcutta 1935, Prime Minister of Bengal 1937 Advocate General of East Bengal 1947 Chief Minister of East Bengal 1954, Home Minister of Pakistan 1955-1956 and Governor of East Pakistan 1956-1958. Huck was fluent in Bengali, English and Urdu, and had a working knowledge of Arabic and Persian. Huck died in Dhaka, East Pakistan on 27 April 1962. He is buried in the Mausoleum of Three Leaders. The sher e bangla Nagar area of Dhaka, which houses the National Parliament, is named after Huck. The Sher e Bangla Cricket Stadium is also named after him. In 2004, Huck was voted fourth in a BBC poll of the greatest Bengali of all time. Topic: <laughs> Early life and education. Huck was born into a middle-class Bengali Muslim family in Bakerganj in 1873. He was the son of Muhammad Wazid, a reputed lawyer of the Barizal Bar, and Sayyidanessa Khatan. His paternal grandfather Qazi Akram Ali was a mukhtar and a scholar of Arabic and Persian. Initially homeschooled, he later attended the Barizal District School, where he passed the FA examination in 1890. Huck moved to Calcutta for his higher education. He sat for his bachelor's degree exam in 1894, in which he achieved a triple honours in chemistry, mathematics and physics from the Presidency College now Presidency University. He then obtained a master's degree in mathematics from the University of Calcutta in 1896. He obtained his bachelor in law from the University Law College in Calcutta in 1897. Civil servant and lawyer 
From 1908 to 1912, Huck was the assistant registrar of co-operatives. He resigned from public service and opted for public life and law. Being advised by Sir Ashutosh Mukherjee, he joined the Bar Council of the Calcutta High Court and started legal practice. He practiced in the Calcutta High Court for 40 years. Legislator After the first partition of Bengal, Huck attended the All India Mohammedan Educational Conference hosted by Sir Khwaja Salimula in Dhaka, the erstwhile capital of eastern Bengal and Assam. The conference led to the formation of the All India Muslim League. The annulment of the partition led to the formation of the Bengal Provincial Muslim League, in which Huck became secretary. With the patronage of Sir Salimullah and Syed Nawab Ali Chowdhury, he was elected to the Bengal Legislative Council from Dhaka Division in 1913. In 1916, Huck was elected president of the All India Muslim League. Huck was one of those who were instrumental behind formulating the Lucknow Pact of 1916 between the Indian National Congress and the Muslim League. In 1917 Huck was a joint secretary of the Indian National Congress and from 1918-1919 he served as the organization's general secretary. He is the only person in history to concurrently hold the presidency of the League and the general secretary's position in the Congress. In 1918, Huck presided over the Delhi session of the All India Muslim League. In 1919, Huck was chosen as a member of the Punjab Enquiry Committee along with Mutilal Nehru, Chittaranjan Das, and other prominent leaders set up by the Indian National Congress to investigate the Amritsar massacre. Huck was the president of the Midnapore session of the Bengal Provincial Conference in 1920. During the Khilafat movement, Huck led the pro British faction within the Bengal Provincial Muslim League, while his rival Manaruzaman Islamabadi led the pro Ottoman faction. Huck also differed with the Congress leadership during its non cooperation movement. Huck favoured working within the constitutional framework rather than boycotting legislatures and colleges. He later resigned from the Congress. In 1924, Huck served as Education Minister of Bengal for six months under the DRK system. Huck Ministries First Premiership The DRK was replaced by provincial autonomy in 1935, with the first general elections held in 1937. Huck transformed the All Bengal Tenants Association into the Krishak Praja Party. During the election campaign period, Huck emerged as a major populist figure of Bengal. His party won 35 seats in the Bengal Legislative Assembly during the Indian provincial elections, 1937. It was the third largest party after the Bengal Congress and Bengal Provincial Muslim League. The Congress refused to form government due to its pan-Indian policy of boycotting legislatures. Huck formed a coalition with the Bengal Provincial Muslim League and independent legislators. He was elected as the leader of the House and the first Prime Minister of Bengal. Huck's cabinet include Nalini Ranjan Sarkar Finance, Bajoy Prasad Singha Roy Revenue, Maharaja Srish Chandra Nandi Communications and Public Works, Prasanna Deb Rakit Forest and Excise, Makunda Bihari Malik Cooperative Credit and Rural Indebtedness, Sir Khwaja Nazimuddin Home, Nawab Khwaja Habibullah Agriculture and Industry, Hussein Shahid Surawardi Commerce and Labor, Nawab Musharraf Hussain Judicial and Legislative, and Syed Nasher Ali Public Health and Local Self government. In 1940, Huck was selected by Muhammad Ali Jinnah to formally present the Lahore Resolution, which envisaged independent states in the eastern and northwestern parts of India. One of the notable measures taken by Huck included using both administrative and legal measures to relieve the debts of peasants and farmers. He protected the poor agriculturists from the clutches of the usurious creditors by enforcing the Bengal Agricultural Debtors Act 1938. He established debt settlement boards in all parts of Bengal. The Money Lenders Act 1938 and the Bengal Tenancy Amendment Act 1938 improved the lot of the peasants. The Land Revenue Commission appointed by the Government of Bengal on 5 November 1938 with Sir Francis Floud as chairman, submitted the final report on 21 March 1940. 
This was the most valuable document related to the land system of the country. The Tenancy Act of 1885 was amended by the Act of 1938 and thereby all provisions relating to enhancement of rent were suspended for a period of ten years. It also abolished all kinds of ABWAB and Salamis imposts imposed traditionally by the Zamindars on Rayots. The Rayots got the right to transfer their land without paying any transfer fee to Zamindars. The law reduced the interest rate for arrears of rent from 12.50% to 6.25%. The Rayots also got the right to get possession of the Nadi Sakasti land lost through river erosion and appeared again land by payment of four years of rent within twenty years of the erosion. Thus several acts enforced during Huck's premiership helped the peasants to lighten some of their burdens though Huck could not fully execute his program of Dalbot placed before the people during his election campaigns. Huck also promoted affirmative action for Bengali Muslims. Huck held the education portfolio in his cabinet. He introduced the Primary Education Bill in the Bengal Legislative Assembly, which was passed into law and made primary education free and compulsory. But there was a storm of protests from the opposition members and the press when Fazlul Huq introduced the Secondary Education Bill in the Assembly as it incorporated principles of communal division in the field of education at the secondary stage. Huck was associated with the foundation of many educational institutions in Bengal, including Calcutta's Islamia College and Lady Brabourne College, Wajid Memorial Girls High School and Chakar College. Due to intense factional infighting within the Krishak Praja party, that Huck ended up being the lone party member on the cabinet. After 1939, the British Empire grappled with World War II. In 1941, Huck and Sir Sikandar Hayat Khan, the Prime Minister of the Punjab, joined the Viceroy's National Defence Council. Their move angered Muhammad Ali Jinnah because they had not consulted him, and because it deviated from the Muslim League party line that the structure of the council was unacceptable in Asmak as it did not give the League parity with Congress. On 2 December 1941, Huck resigned and Governor's rule was imposed. Topic: Second Premiership, 1941 to 1943. The Second Huck Coalition government was formed on the 12th of December 1941. The coalition was supported by most members in the Bengal Legislative Assembly, except for the Muslim League. Supporters included the secular faction of the Krishak Praja Party led by Shamsuddin Ahmed, the forward bloc founded by Subhash Chandra Bose, pro Bose members of the Bengal Congress and the Hindu Mahasabha led by Syama Prasad Mukherjee. The cabinet included Nawab Bahabur Khwaja Habibullah, Khan Bahadur Abdul Karim, Khan Bahadur Hashim Ali Khan, Shamsuddin Ahmed, Syama Prasad Mukherjee, Santosh Kumar Bose and Upendranath Barman. Despite Huck enjoying the confidence of most of the assembly, he had tense relations with the governor of Bengal John Herbert. The governor favoured the provincial Muslim League leaders and patrons, including Sir Kawaja Nazimuddin, the leader of the opposition, and the Calcutta Trio in the assembly, including Mirza Ahmad Ispahani, Khwaja Noruddin and A.R. Siddiqui. The focal point of the League's campaign against Huck was that he was growing closer with Mukherjee, who was alleged to be working against the political and religious interests of the Muslims. The League appealed to the governor to dismiss the Huck ministry. The fear of Japanese invasion during the Burma campaign and the implementation by the military of a «denial policy» implemented in 1942 caused considerable hardship to the Delta region. A devastating cyclone and tidal waves whipped the coastal region on 26 October but relief efforts were hindered due to bureaucratic interference. On 3 August, a number of prisoners were shot down in Dhaka jail but no inquiry could be held again due to bureaucratic intervention. Another severe strain on the administration was caused when the Congress launched the Quit India movement on 9 August, which was followed by British political repression. The entire province reverberated with protest. The situation was further complicated when Mukherjee resigned bitterly complaining against the interference of the governor in the work of the ministry. On 15 March 1943, the Prime Minister disclosed in the floor of the Assembly that on several occasions, under the guise of discretionary authority, the governor disregarded the advice tendered by the ministry and listed those occasions. The governor did not take those allegations kindly, and, largely due to his initiative, no confidence motions were voted in the Assembly on 24 March and 27 March. 
On both occasions the motions were defeated, although by narrow margins. To enforce his writ, the governor asked Huck to sign a prepared letter of resignation on 28 March 1943 and assigned himself the responsibility of administering the province under the provision of Section 93 of the Constitution. A month later a league-dominated ministry was commissioned with Nazimuddin as the Prime Minister. Huck's party won much fewer seats during the Indian provincial elections, 1946. Political career in Pakistan <inaudible> Advocate general and language movement After the partition of British India, Huck settled in Dhaka and became the Advocate General of the Government of East Bengal. He served in the position between 1947 and 1952. On 31 December 1948, while delivering a presidential address at a literary conference, Huck proposed a language academy for the Bengali language. He supported the Bengali language movement in 1952. Huck was also injured during police action against demonstrators demanding that Bengali be made a state language of Pakistan. <laughs> Chief Ministership Huck was a leading figure in the United Front East Pakistan coalition along with Hussein Shahid Surawardi and Maulana Bashani. The United Front won a landslide victory during the East Bengali legislative election, 1954. Huck himself defeated his arch-rival Sir Kawaja Nazimuddin in the Patuakali constituency. Huck became chief minister for two months. During his short-lived ministry, he took measures to establish the Bangla Academy. King Saud of Saudi Arabia sent a plane to Dhaka to bring Huck for a meeting with the monarch in Karachi. A report in the New York Times stated that Huck wanted independence for East Bengal, which triggered his dismissal and the imposition of Governor General's rule. Huck was subsequently placed under house arrest. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Central Ministership. In August 1955, a coalition between the Krishak Shramak Party in East Pakistan and the Muslim League in West Pakistan allowed Chaudhry Muhammad Ali to become Prime Minister and A.K. Fazlul Huq to become the Federal Home Minister. Prime Minister Ali was later dismissed by President Iskandar Mirza, who allowed a coalition of the Awami League and Republican Party to form government. As a result, the Krishak Shramak Party and the Muslim League formed the main opposition. Governorship Huck was appointed governor of East Pakistan in 1956. He served in the position for two years until the 1958 Pakistani coup d'état. Huck was again placed under house arrest after the coup. Notable quotations Topic. Quotes by Huck I am the living history of Bengal and East Pakistan of the last 60 years. I am the last survivor of that band of unselfish and courageous Muslims who fought fearlessly against terrific odds, on his role in the politics of Bengal, particularly Bangladesh. I want you to consent to the formation of a Bengali army of a hundred thousand young Bengalis consisting of Hindu and Muslim youths on a 50-50 basis. There is an insistent demand for such a step being taken at once, and the people of Bengal will not be satisfied with any excuses. It is a national demand which must be immediately conceded. Writing to Governor John Herbert regarding demands for forming a Bengal army during World War II, Administrative measures must be suited to the genius and traditions of the people and not fashioned according to the whims and caprices of hardened bureaucrats, to many of whom autocratic ideas are bound up with the very breath of their lives. In a letter to the governor of Bengal, they were lions in their own days and we have the descendants of the lions of Indian journalism in our midst today. But the difference between the two classes of lions is very significant. Those were lions whose roars used to reverberate from Bengal across the seven seas to the homes of the British nation, but in the case of the present lions they are as docile as lions in a circus show. 
The roar of the lions of old used to make thrones tremble, but most of the present lions only know how to crouch beneath the throne and wag their tails in approbation of government policy, commenting on critical journalists on the floor of the Bengal Legislative Assembly. Mr. Speaker, I can jolly well face the music, but I cannot face a monkey. Mr. Speaker, I never mentioned any honorable member of this house. But if any honorable member thinks that the cap fits him, I withdraw my remark. A controversial remark against an opponent in the Bengal Legislative Assembly. Topic. Quotes about Huck When the tiger arrives, the lamb must give away, Muhammad Ali Jinnah's comment while making way for Huck, who entered the hall, to address the All India Muslim League Lahore Resolution Session he who in 1943 had wanted to see Nazimuddin and Surawardi bite the dust now shares the same stretch of earth with them. All three are buried, side by side, in the grounds of the Dhaka High Court. For a while, the two of them were called Prime Minister of Pakistan. Fazlul Huq was not. But only he was spoken of as the Royal Bengal Tiger, Rajmohan Gandhi on AK. Fazlul Huq. Personal life. He was married three times. His first wife was Horsheed Begum with whom he had two daughters. The marriage ended in divorce. His second wife was Musamit Janatanissa Begum who was from Howrah, West Bengal. They had no children. His third wife Khadija was from Meerut district, Uttar Pradesh. They had a son together, A.K. Fayezal Huk, who played an active role in Bangladeshi politics. Legacy Sher e Bangla founded several educational and technical institutions for Bengali Muslims, including Islamia College in Calcutta, Baker Hostel, and Carmichael Hostel residence halls for Muslim students of the University of Calcutta, Lady Brabourne College, Adina Fazlul Huq College in Rajshahi, Elliott Hostel, Tyler Hostel, Medical College Hostel, Engineering College Hostel, Muslim Institute Building, Dhaka Eden Girls College Building, Fazlul Huq College at Chakar, Fazlul Huq Muslim Hall, Dhaka University, Fazlul Huq Hall Bangladesh Agricultural University, then East Pakistan Agricultural University, Sher e Bangla Hall Bangladesh University of Engineering and Technology Sher e Bangla Agricultural University Sao Dhaka 1207, Bulbul Music Academy and Central Women's College. Sher e Bangla had significant contribution in founding the leading university of Bangladesh, Dhaka University. During his premiership Bangla Academy was founded and Bengali New Year's Day Pahela Boishak, was declared a public holiday throughout Bangladesh educational institutions e.g. Barizal Sher e Bangla Medical College roads neighborhoods Sher e Bangla Nagor and stadiums Sher e Bangla Mirpur Stadium have been named after him This depicts the respect of the people for Sher e Bangla one of the main roads in Islamabad AKM Fazlul Haq Road is named after him See also Legislatures of British India